Hello and welcome to today's Daily Bible Reading. We're continuing through the book of Job and we kick off Paul's epistle to the Corinthians. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. There is a connection between this section and Paul's epistle to the Corinthians. Hopefully I can bring that out in a moment. Let's pray. Father, open our eyes, open our heart and open our ears. Help us to see, help us to hear and help us to be nourished by your word now, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Job chapter 29. And Job again took up his discourse and said, Oh, that I were as in the months of old, as in the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone upon my head, and by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in my prime, when the friendship of God was upon my tent, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were all around me, when my steps were washed with butter, and the rock poured out for me streams of oil, when I went out to the gate of the city, when I prepared my seat in the square, the young men saw me and withdrew, and the aged rose and stood. The princes refrained from talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The voice of the nobles was hushed, and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard, it called me blessed. When the eye saw, it approved, because I delivered the poor who cried for help, and the fatherless who had none to help him. The blessing of him who was about to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. I was eyes to the blind, and feet to the lame. I was a father to the needy, and I searched out the cause of him whom I did not know. I broke the fangs of the unrighteous and made him drop his prey from his teeth. Then I thought, I shall die in my nest, and I shall multiply my days as the sand. My root spread out to the waters, with the dew all night on my branches, my glory fresh with me, and my bow ever new in my hand. Men listened to me and waited and kept silence for my counsel. And I spoke, and they did not speak again, and my word dropped upon them. They waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouths as for the spring rain. I smiled on them when they had no confidence, and the light of my face they did not cast down. I chose their way and sat as chief, and I lived like a king among his troops, like one who comforts mourners. Chapter 30 but now they laugh at me, men who are younger than I, whose fathers I would have disdained. To sit, to set with the dogs of my flock, what could I gain from the strength of their hands, men whose vigour is gone? Through want and hard hunger they gnaw the dry ground, by night in waste and desolation. They pick saltwort and the leaves of bushes and the roots of the broom tree for their food. They are driven out from human company. They shout after them as after a thief. In the gullies of the torrents they must dwell, in holes of the earth and of the rocks. Among the bushes they bray, under the nettles they huddle together. A senseless, nameless brood, they have been whipped out of the land. And now I have become their song. I am a byword to them. They abhor me. They keep aloof from me. They do not hesitate to spit at the sight of me, because God has loosed my cord and humbled me. They have cast off restraint in my presence. On my right hand the rabble rise. They push away my feet. They cast up against me their ways of destruction. They break up my path. They promote my calamity. They need no one to help them. As through a wide breach they come, amid the crash they roll on. Terrors are turned upon me, my honour is pursued as by the wind, and my prosperity has passed away like a cloud. And now my soul is poured out within me, days of affliction have taken hold of me. The night racks my bones, and the pain that gnaws me takes no rest. With great force my garment is disfigured, it binds me about like the collar of my tunic. 
God has cast me into the mire, and I have become like dust and ashes. I cry to you for help, and you do not answer me. I stand, and you only look at me. You have turned cruel to me. With the might of your hand, you persecute me. You lift me up on the wind, you make me ride on it, and you toss me about in the roar of the storm. For I know that you will bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. Yet does not one in a heap of ruin stretch out his hand and in his disaster cry for help? Did not I weep for him whose day was hard? Was not my soul grieved for the needy? But when I hoped for good, evil came, and when I waited for light, darkness came. My inward parts are in turmoil and never still. Days of affliction come to meet me. I go about darkened, but not by the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry for help. I am a brother of jackals and a companion of ostriches. My skin turns black and falls from me, and my bones burn with heat. My lyre is turned to mourning, and my pipe to the voice of those who weep. And what is special about that is that we see that, that Job is still praying. He's telling God, this is how I feel, and this is how I feel about you. I feel that you've really let me down here. I, I, even when I saw people who were in anguish, I comforted them, and I'm not anything compared to you. Then why in the midst of my anguish aren't you comforting me? He's saying to God. And what we're seeing there is someone who's praying from his heart. And it's a great model, it's a great example of how we should be responding when we're going through hard times as well. Rather than shaking a fist at God, we open our hand to God and we cry out to him. This is Paul's epistle to the Corinthians. And again, I remind you that the epistles in the New Testament are arranged firstly churches and then individuals. And the churches go from largest down to the smallest. 1 Corinthians, believe it or not, is one of four epistles that Paul wrote to the Corinthians. We're going to hear the expression, in my previous letter to you. Well, that tells us there must have been another one. And then Paul, in writing what we call 2 Corinthians, he's also going to refer to my previous epistle, which isn't 1 Corinthians, so now we deduce that there must have been four at least four. Now what this tells us is that divine inspiration was not a gift given to the writer. It's a gift given to the text. In other words, the writer was inspired to write divinely inspired text. And not everything that Paul wrote was divinely inspired. But some of it was, and we have it here. We believe are preserved and organized by the Holy Spirit. So let's have a look now. Corinth in Macedonia, or what we might call Greece, uh, was, was famous as a place of incredible immorality and idolatry. So let's read this. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and in all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarrelling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or 
I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of the world, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers, not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And there we have Paul's opening salvo to the Corinthians. He's actually addressing two major problems that are happening in the church. One is identified immediately, and that is the divisions between them. They were aligning themselves with their favorite preachers. And Paul is going to just really lay down the law, so to speak, and, and say, hey, hang on, that's not, that's not how we conduct ourselves as Christians. We're not aligned to a particular leader. We are, we, you just got to read chapter one to see how often he says, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's, he's telling them, your allegiance is to Christ, not to a man primarily. And the second problem in the Corinthian church was, was indicative of the culture, the cultural backdrop uh, of Corinth. And that was, it was a place that was famous for its immorality and sensuality and, and its, um, sexual, its sexual immorality. And so to be called a Corinthian was an insult because it meant that you were a person of loose morals. And so Paul's going to address that because that began to reflect in the church at Corinth as well. So Paul will address those two issues, sexual immorality and disunity. Let's pray. Father, again, we continue to look at Job and we see that in the midst of his anguish, in the midst of his confusion, he still clung to you in prayer. He still conveyed his heart even though what he said may not have been entirely accurate, we know it was accurately what he was thinking and feeling. And Father, that gives us great hope that your shoulders are broad enough for our to come and, and just bear our heart and even at, at times our disappointment with you. But God forbid that we should be ever disappointed with you because Father, we just have come to know you and to trust you. We've come to see that you always do good, you are good. So, Father, I pray that those who joined with me today in this daily Bible reading would have that confidence in you as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you for joining with me today in this daily Bible reading. If you haven't yet given this a thumbs up, please do. If you're not yet a subscriber, come and join the team. We're going through the Bible in a year. If you're just starting today, keep going and make your way around to yesterday. 
and that way you too will have read the Bible in 12 months, which is a great achievement. You'll see me tomorrow for our next Daily Bible. Lesson.